Sairam children, welcome in your English class. We are doing chapter number 13, The Selfish Giant. We have read about its author, the writer. We have also done the new words and I have told you to write down the word meanings from your book. And we have completed this chapter till the notice board which um, the giant has put on the on a high wall first of all he built the high wall and then he put up a notice board trespassers will be prosecuted so this show that how selfish the giant was now we will start the poor children had no, now nowhere to play they tried to play on the roads but the roads were was very dusky and full of hard stone they did not like the like it they used to wander about around the high wall um, when their lessons were over and talk about the beautiful garden beautiful garden inside how happy we were there they said to each other then the spring came and all over the country there were little blossoms and little birds only in the garden of the selfish giant it was still winter the birds did not care to sing in it as there were no children and the trees forget to blossom. Once a beautiful flower put it head, its head out of the grass but when it saw the notice board it was so sorry for the children that it slipped back into the ground again and went off to sleep. The only people who were pleased were, were the snow and the frost. Spring has forgotten this garden, they cried. So we will live here all the year, all the year round. The snow covered up the grass with her great white clock and the frost painted all the trees silver. Then they invited the north wind to stay when, uh, with them and he came. He was wrapped in fur and he rode all the day about the garden and blew the chimney pot down. This means that uh, children were saying that uh, how happy we were earlier when we were there, when we were there in the garden, when we were have time to, when we, when we were played in the garden, that time we were happy. But now as season change, Spring came in the country and all over the country there are little blossom that means flowers and little little birds. But only in self but only in the giant's garden it, it is still winter. Okay. Birds did not care to sing. Birds did not came there and they did not sing because there were no children in the garden. Tree forgot to blossom. Okay. Only a beautiful, once a beautiful flower, one, only once a beautiful flower put a, a, uh, its head out from the grass. But when, uh, when it saw the notice board that trespassers will be prosecuted, it, the flower feels so sorry for the children and slip back, in, back into the ground again and sleep. The only person who were pleased were the snow and the frost because there were only snow and frost in the selfish giant's garden. Spring forgotten this place, this garden, they cried. Who? Snow and frost. So we will live here all around. Okay. Then the snow covered the grass with her white clock. The frost painted the trees silver and they invited their friend North Wind to stay with them. And North Wind came. He was wrapped in, in the fur and roared all the day about the garden. Okay. This is a delightful spot, he said. We must ask the hail to visit for a visit. So the hail came. Every day for three hours he rattled on the roof of the castle till he 
broke most of the slates and then he ran around and around uh, round and round the garden as far as he could go he was dressed in gray and his breath was like ice this means they called their one of their one of their friend hail so hail also came and each day for 3 hours the hail rattled on the roof of the castle and most of the slates were broken and then he ran round and round the garden as far as he can he was dressed in gray and breath was like ice i cannot understand why the spring is so late in coming the selfish giant said the selfish giant as he sat at the window and looked out at his cold white garden i hope there will be a change in our weather in the weather now what selfish giant is saying that i cannot understand why spring is so late in coming when he sit at his, when he sat at the window and look out his garden is all white then selfish uh, then giant said i hope there will be change in weather okay but the spring never came nor the summer the autumn gave golden fruits to every garden but to the giant's garden she gave none he is too selfish she said so it was always winter there and the north wind and the hail and the frost and the snow dance about through the trees spring never came summer never came the autumn gave the golden fruits to every garden but for selfish gar- uh, but for selfish giant's garden she has gave none because the giant was too selfish so they decided to have only winters there wind hail snow frost they all dance in selfish giant's garden one morning the giant was lying awake in bed when he heard some lovely music it sounded so sweet to his ears that he thought it must be king's musician passing by it was really only a little linnet linnet singing outside his window but it was so long since he had heard a bird singing in his garden that it seemed to his to him to be the most beautiful music in the world then the hail stopped dancing over his head and the north wind ceased roaring and a delicious perfume came to him through the open casement i believe the spring has come at last said the giant and he jumped out of the bed and looked out one morning the giant was lying on his bed he heard a very lovely music that music was so soothing that uh, the selfish giant think that the king's musician was passing by but it was really only a small bird sitting outside his window and singing okay then the hail stopped dancing over his head the north wind ceased roaring a delicious perfume smell means the smell from small flowers which came i believe now selfish giant said i believe the spring has came has come at last he jumped out of his bed to look outside what did he see he saw a most wonderful sight through a little hole in the wall the children had crept in and then were and then and they were sitting on the branches of the tree in every tree that that he could see there was a little child and the tree was so glad to have the children back again that they had covered themselves with blossoms 
and were waving their arms gently above the children's head. Means, when he came out, when he looked out, what did he see? He saw a most wonderful sight. From the little hole in the wall, the children crept in, crept in, and they were sitting on the branches of the tree. Okay, in every tree he could see there was a little child. The trees were so glad that the children were back again in the garden, and the trees covered themselves with blossoms and waving their hands or arms on children's head. The birds were flying about and twittering with delight, and the flowers were looking up through the green grass and laughing. It was a lovely scene. Only in one corner it was still winter. The birds were flying in his garden and twittering with delight. The flowers were looking through the green grass and laughing. It means all over the garden there is greenery. Flowers. It was a lovely scene. But only in one corner there was still winter. It was the farthest corner of the garden. And in it was a standing little boy. He was so small that he could not reach up to the branches of the tree and he was wandering all round it, crying bitterly. Only in one corner there was still winter. Why? Because that is the farthest corner of the garden and there one boy, one little boy is standing and crying because he could not reach the branches of the tree. The poor tree was still quite covered with frost and snow. And the north wind was blowing and roaring above. Climb up, little boy, said the tree. And it bent its branches down as low as it could. But the boy was too tiny. Okay. At the corner, the boy was standing and crying bitterly because, because he was so small, so tiny, that, it could not, that he could not reach the branches of the tree. Then trees had climbed up little boy and the tree bent down its, its branches as low as the tree can but the boy could not reach because he was too tiny. And the giant's heart melted at as he looked out. How selfish I have been, he said. Now I know why the spring would not come here. I will put that little boy on the top of the tree and then I will knock down the wall and my garden shall be the children's playground forever and ever. He was really very sorry for what he had done. Now here, the selfish giant realized his mistake. His heart melted by seeing, by seeing this. His heart melted by seeing the little boy. Then he said, how selfish, who said giant, how selfish I have been. And now I come to know why the spring would not come to my garden. Now I will put that little boy on the top of the tree. And, and I will break the wall which I have built. From now my garden shall be the children's playground forever and he was very and he was really very sorry for what he had done okay he realized his mistake and he wants to rectify it so he crept downstairs and opened the front door quite softly and went out into the garden but when the children saw him they were so frightened that they that all ran away and the garden become winter again. Only the little boy did not run. For his eyes were so full of tears that he did not see the giant. Okay. Then the giant came down. And he softly opened the front door. 
and went into the garden. But when the children saw him, saw the giant, they were so frightened and they ran all over the garden. And the garden become winter again. But only the little boy, because his eyes was full of tears, he did not see the giant. He did not see the giant is coming. And the giant stole up behind him and took him gently in his hand and put him up into the tree. And the tree broke at once into blossom and the birds came and sing on it. And the little, little boy scratched out his two arms and flung them around the giant's neck <coughs> and kissed him. <clears throat> what happened when a uh, giant came down? He stood behind the boy and uh, take that boy gently in his hand and put that boy into the tree. And the tree immediately broke into the blossom and birds were came and sang. But the little boy scratched out its two arm and flung and he hugged giant on his neck and kissed him and the other children when they saw that the giant was not wicked any longer came running back and with them the spring came when he when the other children saw that the giant was not saying anything to this to this little boy uh, and putting him on the tree then the children again run run uh, came back to his garden and with the children the spring came it is your garden now little children said the giant and he took a great axe and knocked down the wall and when the people were going going to the market at 12 o'clock they found that the giant playing with children in the most beautiful garden they had ever seen now what happened giant said it is your garden little children and he took a axe and knocked down the wall and when people were going to the market at 12 o'clock they found that the giant that giant were playing with the little children and they have not seen this kind of beautiful garden they have ever seen okay all day long they played and in the evening they came to giant to bid him goodbye. But where is your little companion? He said. The boy I put on the tree. The giant loved him the best because he had kissed him. We don't know, answered the child. Children, he has gone away. Now, all day long they played and in the evening the uh, children came to giant to say goodbye but uh, the but the giant asked where is my little companion whom i have put on the tree the giant loved him the most because that boy kissed him we don't know the children replied that we don't know he has gone away You, you must tell him to be sure and come here tomorrow. You make sure, said the giant. Giant said to the children that you make sure that he will come tomorrow. But the children said that they did not know from where, where he uh, did not know where he lived and had never seen him before. The giant felt very sad. When the giant said to the children that make sure tomorrow also he will come, the children said, we don't know where he lived. Even we have not seen him uh, before. The giant felt very sad. Every afternoon when school was over, the children came and played, um, played with the giant. But the little boy whom the uh, giant loved was never seen again. The giant was very kind to all the children, yet he longed for him for his first little friend and often spoke of him how uh, how how i would like to see him 
he used to say. Every afternoon when school is over, the children used to come to the garden and play with giant. But the little boy whom, uh, the, uh, whom the giant loved the most and the boy who kissed the giant never came back, never seen again. The giant was so kind to all the children. He always used to talk about his first little friend. How I would like to see him. Years went over. The giant grew very old and feeble. He could not play about any more. So he sat on a huge armchair and watched the children at their games and admired his garden. Years passed. The giant grew very old and feeble. He could not play about. He could not play anymore. He sat. He sat on a huge armchair and watched the children playing. And and he used to admire his garden. I have many beautiful flowers, he said. But the children are the most beautiful flowers. What the giant said, I have many beautiful flowers in my garden, but the children are the most beautiful among them. One winter morning, he looked out at his window as he was dressing. He did not, he did not hate the winter now, for, for he knew that it was merely the spring sleep and the flowers were resting. Now what giant said one day one morning giant was looking out of his window as he and he was dressing up he said he did not hate winter now because he knew because he knew that it was the spring asleep and the flowers were resting suddenly he rubbed his eyes in wonder and looked and looked it certainly was a marvelous sight in the farthest corner of the garden was a tree quite covered with white little with lovely white little blossoms. Its branches were all golden and silver fruits hung down from them. And underneath it stood a little boy he had loved. Suddenly he rubbed his eyes in wonder. And he looked and looked outside the window. It was a marvelous sight that at the farthest corner, again on that farthest corner, there was the now there was a tree it was quite covered with white lovely blossoms and its branches were golden covered with silver hung silver fruits hung on hung it on it and what he, what did he saw a little boy he loved the most stood there downstairs then the giant in great joy and out into the garden he hastened across the grass and came near to the child and when he came quite close his face to grew red with anger and he said who hath dared to wound thee for on the palm of the child's hand were the prints of two nails and the prints of two nails were were on the little feet he what he came down in a great joy in uh, came down to his garden in a great joy and cro and crossed the across the grass he came near to the child when and when he came quite close his face grew with red anger he said Who hath dare to wound thee? cried the giant. Tell me that I make I may take my big squat and slay him. Nah, answered the child. But these are the wounds of love. Here, what is the meaning of this? It means the giant said that because the child heard here. It is, it is seen that chi on child's palm and uh, nails or little f and on little feet there is some kind of wounds. So, 
so the giant cried and said tell me that means tell me who did this who has gave you the wound i will take my big squad and slay him then the boy replied answered na but these are the wound of wounds of love these are the wounds of love who art thou said the giant and the strange awe fall on him and he knelt before the little child and the ch- child smiled on the giant and said to him you let me play once in your garden today you shall come with me to my garden which is paradise that boy who once played with uh, the giant and he the giant put that boy on the tree the same boy he said once i played with you in your garden today you shall come to my garden to play and what which is paradise and when the child ran it ran in that afternoon they found the giant lying dead under the tree all covered with white blossom when the child ran means when the child came in in afternoon they found the giant lying dead under the tree and all covered with white blossoms this means the giant met that little boy what do you think the little boy was maybe some god or something who came to take the giant with him okay so this is story is about the selfish giant how he was selfish and how he came to know his mistake and how he rectify it and how at last he died i hope you all have understood this story very well now i want you to read the story twice complete your work okay children sai ram